came back to the lower falls and last time I was here I had noticed some dippers, some birds on the rocks in front of this waterfall. At the time I didn't have a long enough lens so I didn't uh, try to make a picture. Today I brought the 400 out just in case having, if I could get one of these dippers to jump up on a rock in front of the waterfall it might make a really, <laughs> really cool shot. When I first got here, I, I did see them kind of splash around, but since I got set up, um, I don't see them right now. I did bring 400 speed film today, just in case. The bird is kind of working its way downstream towards me, just really oblivious to what I'm doing. Although I might reposition, see if I can get a little lower. Probably should have focused on the bird more than trying to make some video. He came right through here and I wasn't set up with my tripod. It would have been perfect. I shot a few Hail Mary shots. I doubt they're going to be sharp enough because I was basically hand holding them. But this is a fairly heavy camera and I've got a, the weight of the tripod underneath it. It might steady just enough to get a usable shot. Even if it's not tack sharp, it, it might be sharp enough to use. It flew off. I'm gonna hang out here for a little while longer. See if it comes back. Oh man. I really wish I had just re had a better position to begin with. My the biggest mistake was setting up for the bird to be further away downstream, not anticipating it to come my way. I really would have liked to be in right where I'm at now, at a lower angle. But I kind of started shooting right away and I think I made a mistake of not getting in a better position to begin with. Part of that was just trying to do too many things at once. Basically, this was one of those shots that I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to get a little wildlife along the creek. This is a pretty dark bird in black and white. It may not even show up hardly at all. I don't know if you can hear me because of all this rushing water. I don't know how else to do it. But I'm going to uh, hang out here for a little while, see if the bird comes back. That was really what I was here for today was to see if that bird was going to be around. I did look around the corner and that bird is just down the ways so you might get used to me in the area and you might just come flying back here in a little bit. So I think I'm going to stay in this area probably for about an hour and see what happens. So now I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't make a shot on one of the blooms that are kind of hanging out. I might pop my digital camera on and see if I can get a few video clips. It's 
quite a ways away, but at least you get a better idea of what I'm looking at. I'm calling it a dipper. I'm not up on my bird species, but I think that's what it is. I'm sure someone's going to read me for misidentifying this bird. Excellent. I think I did get a, a little bit of usable video on that bird. I'm going to transfer back to the uh, film camera and see if uh, the bird will still play ball. If you got close enough, I probably could have shot it with film camera, but I was already shooting digital, so I didn't shoot in still frames with the digital, just with just video, because that's what I set up to do. I've got to focus with this little loop on the back of the camera, so it's a little awkward. So, fingers crossed that I got something interesting to put in this, in this episode. This gives me a deeper appreciation for what the guys and, and gals went through to get wildlife photos back in the days when it was just film. It's a lot harder to shoot wildlife with film than it is digital. Despite why we see so much wildlife photography now on social media, it's really quite easy. <laughs> it's a lot easier in digital. Better than shooting digital when that bird came through here. I could have up my ISO, I could have handheld the shots, it would have been no problem. But with film, I got all these limitations. If this wasn't a film project, I'm not sure I would be uh, trying to shoot wildlife with film. Although, you know, it might be kind of cool to have that film look with wildlife photography. So, maybe that's something to explore. But then some, you know, why make your life harder? He's on the move again. I'm always impressed with a vertical element in the forest. I know, isn't that weird? <laughs> what vertical element? Well, must, you know, the trees. But these trees really do seem to stand out on this hillside over here. I think it's the light nature, the light tone of their, of their bark that's catching my eye. Although, it may not be that much lighter than the foliage. It just might be a color difference that I'm seeing. But I'm going to set up a shot. So I, between these two big trees, I see a nice little window for a photograph. And right now the light is still pretty good in here. So let's, I'm going to have to probably hurry because the sun's raising pretty fast. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't set up a shot right here. Well, we've got a, about a half a about half second exposure here, even with uh, 400 speed film. I shot some vertical and some horizontal in this section of forest. I 
don't think I'm quite getting what I'm seeing. I'm <laughs> there's something here that I need I need to work. Maybe it's just the angle I'm at. It's, it's a lot thicker in here than it was last time I was out here. This last fall. I think I'll try a couple more frames on this before I give up completely. I think this shot speaks to the vertical nature of this little canyon that this creek runs through. How steep the uh, sides are. I think these trees really help illustrate that, how long they have to be to, to reach up to the sky to get enough light. And how straight they are. There's no, no limbs down below. Everything's all up really high. When I first set the shot up, I really didn't care for the composition. And it's, it's, I almost didn't even take the photograph. I kind of set it up and said, nah, too simple, too basic, not gonna work. But the more I look, through the, <laughs> look at it through the viewfinder, the more I'm kind of liking it, the more it's starting to grow on me. This is one of those, I probably won't, I'll have to live with it a while to see if I might actually want to use it. There's not a lot of um, options as far as changing my angle of view. There's just there's too much brush around, so I really am stuck with this really small area here. So if it doesn't work here, it's not going to work anywhere else. When shooting across the ravine here, after I got my shots, I looked down and saw this pine cone kind of hanging on this limb, just kind of stuck. I thought, oh, there's a photograph. I've got a few frames left. If I don't find anything else, it's, it's not a big waste. I've, I had a pretty, this is a 36 exposure roll, so. I don't mind wasting a few frames. I, I'd like to get this film developed. I don't like to waste any frame, but today I may have to make an exception. I'm, the light's not going to be my friend here. I think uh, this, if, this might be the last time you see me in this video, unless I uh, happen to see something on the way out. So I think we're going to end today's video right here. Nice backdrop. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride. Thank you.